Well, the critical humanitarian situation in, in Kabul now coupled with this uh, desperate terror threat there, that's what makes Afghanistan so complicated. And retired Colonel Chris Costa knows what it's like to be there and feel both. As a matter of fact, he's the one who can give you the counterterrorism view right from the foxhole. Chris ran a wide range of intelligence and special operations in Afghanistan, in Panama, in Bosnia, the first and second Iraq wars, and he earned two bronze stars for sensitive human intelligence work in Afghanistan. So he knows the score. And Chris Costa, now the executive director of the International Spy Museum in D.C., but he's got keen insight and thoughts on what's happening in Afghanistan now and the threat that remains going forward, not only there, but around here in our homeland. So, uh, Chris, thanks for being with us. Well, thanks for having me today. If I could say right up front, my heart, too, goes out to the families of the service members that were killed yesterday. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy for the Afghans that lost their lives yesterday. Hmm. And, and so, so, as I mentioned, sorry, for, for, for decades, uh, intel, counterterrorism, inside special ops, you, you've seen a lot and advised two presidents on these matters. The, the intel was there. This is the thing that, that has bothered me. The words we heard was an attack is imminent. An attack is likely. So the intel was there, but we couldn't stop it. What, what do you think happened? So oftentimes we have intelligence, but we don't know the specificity of where the attack's gonna happen, the scope of the attack. So all you can do is harden the fence it defenses and do the best you can to disseminate the information to take whatever measures you can employ very quickly so knowing that there was a drumbeat of of threat information allowed military forces presumably to harden the defenses but that said you've seen the the pictures of what's playing out on the ground in Kabul it is a complicated challenging situation and at the same time you know, the Taliban are not reliable counterterrorism partners. They are not partners like the Afghan commando forces that we have worked with for, for many, many years, the United States has. So I think the situation is extremely concerning. It's dynamic. As you have indicated, there are humanitarian issues that have to be addressed. At the same time, the counterterrorism problem doesn't go away. The Haqqani and network, go ahead, sorry. Well, uh, no, that, that's all right. I just wanted to ask you about a question that, that people have about the American casualties. They were packed together, uh, really, in, in what the State Department spokesman Ned Price called the most noble of missions. There they are reaching out into the crowd, feet, inches from, from that mass of humanity who are desperate to get into the airfield, finding the people with U.S. passports and proper documentation otherwise to get in. And I just wonder, you have know, flown into airports in the, in the Middle East, in Iraq, in Erbil, where the standoff perimeter is a mile. I mean, it, is this a function that it all happened so fast that there wasn't sufficient planning and preparation for an evacuation out of that airport where Americans could have been some considerable distance from the first checkpoint? Those Marines, they were right there in the middle of that mob. Right. I think you get to the heart of the issue. It is a complex environment. It's a dynamic environment. I wasn't there on the ground. I'm not going to second guess the security the implementation that played out. I know that commanders on the ground in our individual uh, service members, they would have taken the necessary precautions as they saw fit to do, but there is absolutely risk. Now, this does underscore a concerning withdrawal to include a what I believe is an artificial timeline of 31 August. We could buy more space and time. But that said, I'm not going to relitigate the decisions that have been made. I'm not in a position to do so, certainly. But as an outside observer, uh, we lost some space and time. And now the objective is to not have any more casualties on the ground and to finish executing this withdrawal, not leave U.S. Americans behind or any citizens that want to get home from the United States. And uh, at the same time, we have to be prepared to continue to get our former allies and partners out of Afghanistan. So this mission is going to continue well beyond 31 August, and it's going to be challenged by the fact that we don't have a footprint on the ground in Afghanistan. Fair enough, and I, and I appreciate the, you there not second guessing. That's that's not something uh, people do a lot, and I appreciate and respect that as the wise choice. Let me let me go to President Biden. He he says he will hunt down 
those responsible for killing our service members and the innocent Afghans who died as well. How, how would that mission, what would that mission look like and, and what's its chance of success, do you think? So I think it has a high chance of success. I'm extremely com confident in our our special services, our intelligence community, the United States intelligence community, our Western partners, as well as U.S. special operations. So what that looks like is there can potentially be sources on the ground in Kabul that have ways to communicate to intelligence officers. At the same time, we have the ability to do strikes from the air, and we will, we will be relentless in tracking and hunting down those who have participated in that attack. Uh, even Taliban may provide intelligence at some point on who conducted those attacks, and it'll be up to the community, the analysts, to painfully go through that intelligence and, and make sure that policymakers and commanders are armed with exactly the right information so the United States can take offensive action. So here we are just a few days now from that August 31st deadline. Time is running out, the situation dynamic and dangerous. If, if you were the president's counterterrorism advisor now, uh, wh what would you tell him? And should he be accepting red lines from the Taliban in these last days? Well, first, I don't think any president should accept any red lines from the Taliban or the Haqqani network or any other terrorist associated group, right? We are still a superpower and we we have uh, various tools that we can use and instruments to employ and we need to continue using all of those instruments to include military information, diplomatic intelligence. So we should wield those instruments and put pressure on not just the Taliban, but uh, we have to keep the Haqqani network in line because they are a foreign terrorist organization. Inexplicably, they're providing security in Kabul along with the Taliban. It, it's mind boggling, but that is the situation we're in. That's what we have to work with. So I advise the president that long term, this is a important fight that doesn't end with our evacuation out of Af Afghanistan. In fact, extremists worldwide are going to be emboldened and consider this a victory. It pains me to say that, but they're going to consider this a victory. This is a generational fight. It will continue because we've never got at the heart of the problem, which is getting at a counter ideology, right? It's a malign ideology that jihadists use to motivate their fighters. And it's, it's hard to defeat an ideology with with weapons. Colonel Chris Costa, thanks very much for that context and analysis on this situation. Good to see you again. Thank you very much for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.